Okay, folks, this is the scored rocket pattern that I'm going to be flying today. Uh, it's a simple rectangular pattern. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. If you want to see more, you can pause the video. I'm going to be flying this in uh, single rate of fire. So I'm not going to change anything before I start. And I'm going to fly uh, and discuss it as I fly it. But uh, this is on the Sinai map. And uh, just a quick uh, reminder, when you want to fire rockets, you select the stations you want to uh, fire from. And then on the external storage switch, you go to Rocket Dispenser. Uh, and then uh, you don't need any of these three switches. And there is no master arm switch in the F5. So uh, let's just uh, press on to the next subject here. Okay, this is a real busy chart. I'm going to try to keep it simple as well. Um, the center chart is an authorized configuration for takeoff, upwards, inboards, center line, and tips. Everything on this chart pertains to these airplanes. We are the E3, so it's a valid chart. And everything, uh, all the configurations in the center here have um, aim nines on the wingtips. These are authorized stores to be carried on the center line with whatever we come up with here. And we're going to fly uh, um, LAUs on the outboard and LAU 3s on the inboard. So uh, similar ordinance on both. Uh, we get a 3 here, which brings us down to this additional ballast. So we have to have full ammo and over 200 pounds on the center line store. And we've got that. Some rules to live by. You can read these. Uh, you can stop the video if you really want to get into it. Uh, but uh, for today, um, uh, we want to begin by transferring centerline fuel once we have room in the internals. Uh, um, we can fire all four stations, allow three simultaneously, and that's what, I'm, that's what I intend to do. We are limited to um, gun bursts of two seconds or less as long as we have uh, wing ordnance. Uh, wing stores must be released prior to the AIM-9 launches. We don't intend to launch the AIM-9 today, but uh, that's a rule. Uh, with internal fuel greater than 2,200 pounds, our airspeed above 0.95 is limited to a symmetrical G of 6.5 knots. And this airplane is real easy to overstress, so be care, be careful. Anytime you're jettisoning stores or releasing stores, the gear should be up, speed brake closed, and you have an option for the flaps with stores, um, and or you can even have an auto or up. Um, and up for uh, when you, if you're going to uh, jettison or I guess jettison canisters, MERS tanks, or pylons, you want to be uh, you want to have the flaps up. Okay, there's some other stuff on here that might be of interest. Uh, the order here is the same for both jettison and stores. Uh, start your transfer inboards before outboards, uh, and then uh, hold on to the centerline store because of this restriction until after you release all the ordnance. I think that's pretty much all you need to know from this chart. There's much more to read if you want it, but uh, I'm going to press on. Okay, let's take the discussion to the landing pattern. We want to calculate uh, the landing speed and landing distance for, for the F-5 coming back from a mission. And uh, anytime you're going to do that, you're going to want to know what the stall speeds are for various weights in that airplane. And there are two ways to calculate the, uh, the landing speed. And that's the hard way using the charts and the easy way using a simple formula that is good for most cases. And we'll talk about both. Starting out with the, the hard way, anytime you're going to um, uh, find a landing speed in a jet, you want to know what the stall speeds are. There's the lightweight case in red, the heavyweight case in green, defined as 12,000 pounds for lightweight, 16,000 pounds um, for the heavyweight. The difference between the two configurations is lightweight has just a thousand pounds of fuel and clean, and the heavyweight is got a thousand pounds of fuel plus a thousand or three thousand pounds of additional fuel or stores, and then uh, um, the rest is the same. So if we trace the lines through for, through for the uh, lightweight, we uh, Start out at 12, come across to the CG, down to the configuration, which we're going to use landing configuration, drop down to the wings level stall speed of 117 knots. We do the same thing for the green case. Start at 16, CG the same, configuration the same, wings level stall speed of 130 knots. 
Okay, keep that in mind. We'll cover the green or the blue uh, later. So we want to find uh, an approach speed and a touchdown speed. The rule of thumb is the touchdown speed is about 10 knots lower than the final approach speed, but we'll still calculate here just to prove that point. So the lightweight, we start at 12. We come up to uh, the final approach speed uh, curve here, which is the CG. We'll use 15, and we'll come across to uh, 147. And we drop down here to the CG, and we get 137 for the touchdown speed. So that's 10 knots difference as I discussed. Okay, let's look at the heavyweight, 16 uh, grand, up to 15. Over here, we get 170 for final approach speed. Drop down to the touchdown speed, and we get uh, 160. There's the 10 knots. Uh, I want you to compare the uh, uh, final approach speed and the uh, touchdown speed for both the lightweight and heavyweight to the stall speeds for both, and you can see that there's um, quite a gap between the two. So there's uh, lots of... Uh, if you're touching down at 160 knots, that's 30 knots above stall, so that's that's pretty good. Okay, the, the, the landing distance, the lightweight, uh, 12, up to uh, the, a uh, temperature, and then over to the sea level elevation, down to the wind baseline, to the headwind, down to the ground run distance of 3,000 feet. If over a 50-foot obstacle, we stretch that up to 4,600 feet. Uh, and now the heavy weight, 16, up to the same temperature over the same sea level. Uh, wind of 10 knots, the same. Drop down to the uh, ground roll distance, and we get 4,000 feet. Over a 50-foot obstacle, we get 5,800 feet. These are relatively short distances uh, to land with, uh, especially when you consider the F5 operates typically out of runways greater than 7,000 feet, and today's runway is 9,800 feet. And also, if you remember that this is no drag chute. Uh, now, if you do use your drag chute, these numbers will be even shorter. Okay, let's move on to the easy way. Uh, we use this uh, kind of uh, number of 145. Let's start out with a basic configuration of 1,000 pounds uh, internal fuel, and that's uh, 145 knots plus one knot for every 200 pounds over 1,000 pounds. And we're going to just uh, consider ourselves with fuel only for the time being for this formula. And uh, we drop it down, and this is the formula we come up with. We're going to add five knots for ammo. Um, uh, we can subtract it uh, as well, but we'll use uh, that to start with. So 145 plus 5 plus 0 is 150 knots for the lightweight stall speed. So we'll go back here. And whether, it, whether we add that five knots or not, it's pretty close to 147. In one case, it's a little over it, 150. And in the other case, it's a little bit below it at 145. And uh, if you take nine, uh, 10 knots off the configuration without the ammo, you get 135. With the ammo, you get 140. And again, that's still, either number is still well, well above the stall speed. So that's a safe number for the lightweight. Okay, let's go to the heavyweight now. 145 plus one knot for every 200 pounds above 1,000 pounds. And let's just use uh, fuel uh, only here. So 3,000 pounds of fuel uh, divided by 200, which is one knot for every uh, 200 pounds above 1,000 pounds. So we divide that. So this is a divisional problem. So we can eliminate the trailing two zeros. And we get 30 divided by 2 uh, equals 15. We do the math. We get 165 uh, or 160 without the, uh, the ammo. So we... Uh, compare that to the previous number. So it's either, uh, uh, what, what did we say, one, 165 or 160, 155 or 150. So 150 is the slowest speed we're going to get at touchdown, and that's still 20 knots above the stall speed. So uh, again, safe numbers. Okay, so uh, what happens if we, uh, we do this and it's not all fuel. Maybe we come back with uh, some other configuration. So let's go uh, to this configuration here, which is a typical uh, thing we, we might return with on an air-to-ground mission where we have uh, five pylons, including the centerline pylon, and a, an empty 150-gallon centerline tank. So uh, what that adds is about a little over 1,000 pounds uh, to our, uh, our lightweight uh, scenario. And so we trace that through the lines, and what we get is a stall speed wings level of 119 knots. So that's really not all that bad. Uh, and we had ordnance. Um, on top of that, if we had to carry that, we could always uh, jettison if we had to. But if we wanted to bring it back, we just have to um, take note of the AOA 
and just make sure we didn't get slow and uh, and maybe uh, bump up the speed a few knots in order to land, especially when we know we have lots of runway. Um, okay, so just you want it's something you want to be smart about. Okay, one other thing we want to talk about coming in uh, to land, we can come in two ways, either a visual straight in or on an instrument approach. In either case, you're going to be flying uh, your approach speed uh, until you get to short final, in which case you're going to um, reduce the throttles to the idle detent. And you're going to try to um, touch down at your touchdown speed. And even if you drop uh, 10 knots below that, there is no case that we we uh, we looked at where we were uh, in trouble there. Now, if you have extra ordnance that we didn't discuss about, then you just want to be careful about getting much slower than your touchdown speed. Okay. Um, what else here? Uh, okay. Now, the other way to come in is coming into the break. And if we come into the break, that means we've got this final turn here. So you do your landing checklist, you calculate your landing data, and you come up with, let's just say, 165. And so you want to add 20 knots for the final turn. So you would fly 185 around the final turn, slowing to 165 on final, and you do go through the same approach to uh, aim for your touchdown speed uh, on the runway. And I think uh, that's pretty much it. So let's... Uh, Let's press on with uh, with the flight. Okay, folks, here we are in the FIVE on the flight line, getting ready for part two of realism stuff. Um, we're going to focus today on uh, the rocket pattern and then coming back here to the landing pattern. Those are the two primary focuses for today. And uh, I'm not going to keep you here, so I'll just meet you there when we get to the rocket pattern. So... Uh, I'll see you there. Okay, folks, uh, looks like we're heading over to the range. Welcome to uh, part two of Real Limb Stuff. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, start my fuel transfer. We're just about where I need to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up for uh, going into the range. So we'll go up button six. And then we'll select the uh, uh, outboard stations and the inboard stations. And we'll select uh, rocket dispenser on the rotary knob. And then we'll make sure the site is at manual and 14. And it is, so we're set for that. And the other thing we have to do now is just check in. Sinai target range, Cylon 4-1, checking in for my uh, 8.15 range time. Silent 4-1 range control, say number of aircraft, type, and amount of ordnance, target, and time on range. Roger, Silent 4-1 is a single F5E, 78 rockets for the main bull. Should be on the range for about 20 minutes. Roger 4-1, you are cleared on the range. First run is no fire. Report when clearing range. Copy that. Cylon 401 is cleared on the range. First run will be safe. Dodge 4, airborne. Okay, uh, range is over there at about 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see uh, with that sand background, but. Uh, You'll be able to pick it up here. There's some vehicles just to the right of the main bull. And I wanted to send down to 2,000 feet, fly up the run-in line at 2,000 feet, and trim the aircraft at 425 or thereabouts. Okay, starting to pick it up. You can see the vehicles there to the right.
Okay, there's 2,000 feet about. A little bit more on the speed. Yeah, those are still good. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, trim. Okay, we're just about over the bowl. And I'll pitch up into the pattern. Okay, and we're going to, it's kind of a 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 15 degree nose up pull. And I'm turning to the reciprocal heading. And I want to be at 4,000 at whiskey. Okay, still a little bit low, but we'll turn in. 4 1, turning in. Okay, 1,000 to go. Speed is looking good. A little high. There's uh, 5,000. 4 1 in hot. Okay, and now just try to make it as smooth as possible. Place the pipper where I want it. Cleared hot. Hey, 24 foot hit, not bad. Okay. 4 1 off safe. Okay, and then uh, 10 to 15 degree nose up, 2 to 3s on the G's. Pull in for the reciprocal. It looks like I've got uh, transfer complete, I think. Let me double check. There's the reciprocal. Looking for whiskey at 4,000. Let's take a look. Looks like transfer is complete, so I can switch that off. And we'll late, wait for a decrease in the fuel. There's uh, point whiskey, 401 turning in. I was a little low, so I'm climbing up to 5,000. I'll make it up here, hopefully, in this turn. There we go. 5,000. And we'll check the, the uh, dive angle here shortly. 4-1 in hot. Smooth roll in. Smooth roll out. Four one. Cleared hot. Good placement of the uh, pipper. Okay. 32 feet. Okay. Pulling off. 4 1 off safe. I'm not sure what that caution light's about, but we'll check. 10 to 15 degree nose up. And 2 to 3 G's. Pulling for the reciprocal. Oops, a little bit more on the pull. There we go, right there. It's probably pretty close. Looking for 4,000 at Whiskey, pretty close. Not sure what that caution light is for. Okay, there's Whiskey. Hey, 401 turning in. I think I missed my off safe call. Okay, coming around here, 5,000 feet between 250 and 300. Rolling in. 4-1 in hot. 4-1. Cleared smooth, hot. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Consistency. And dive angle of about 30. It's good. Okay, 42 feet. Not bad. Okay, pulling off 10 to 15 degrees. Nose up. 2 to 3 G's. Pulling for the reciprocal. Looking for 4,000 at whiskey. Okay. Let's see what that caution light was for. 
There's 4,000. There's whiskey. 4-1 turning in. Miss that. Off safe call again. I'll get it this time. There's 5,000 feet. Not much more than that. Pulling in. 4-1 in hot. 4-1. Cleared hot. Forward 4. No, I think I overdid it there a little bit. Okay, right about there. That's good. Uh, 82 feet. I think I pushed on that one. Okay, 10 to 15 degree nose up. 2 to 3 degrees, or 2 to 3 G's on the pull. Turning towards the reciprocal. And looking for 4,000 at whiskey. Off safe. Uh, or one is off safe. Shit. Okay, here we go. There's uh, 4,000 turning in. 4-1 turning in. Okay. 5,000 feet. Focus. All right, over bank. Four one in hot. Roll in a little bit. Uh, a little bit. Clear no, that's hot. thirty degrees. That's good. Four. Three. Two. Okay, eighteen feet. Not bad. Okay. <clears throat> Ten to fifteen degree nose up. Four one off safe. Shit, almost missed it. Okay, pulling for the reciprocal, two to three G's. Okay, looking for 4,000 at whiskey. Okay, there's whiskey, 4-1 turning in. Get up to 5,000 there. Four one turning in, or in hot rather. Four one. Okay, now hot. just smooth, smooth, smooth. Let the wind blow me down. Okay. Uh, that was a little bit uh, moving around too much. Okay, 10 to 15 degrees, nose up. Two to three Gs, pulling for the reciprocal. A few more runs. Okay, and then uh, looking for 4,000 at. Okay, it's time to go left low here. Probably late. A uh, turning in, 4 1 turning in. Looking for 5,000. Okay. 4 1 in hot. Make it as smooth as possible now. Cleared Just hot. smooth as possible. Forty one feet. Hmm. Okay. Ten to fifteen, two to three, reciprocal, and then four thousand. Didn't mean to use that word, but I missed my off safe call. 401 turning in. Probably going to have to bleep that. 5,000. 
Four one in hot. Four one. Cleared it's smooth, hot. smooth, smooth now. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Right on course. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's two, three, nine. Okay, four one off safe. Golly, my mind is just not thinking about that. Get to it. Okay, I'm a little bit high here at whiskey, so I'll level off here a little bit, catch up. Four four one turning in. Okay, now pull up to five thousand. Now make this one smooth, smooth, smooth. 5,000, rolling in, pull, 4-1 in hot, waste the pipper, 4-1, cleared hot, okay, pull off, 4-1 off safe, yay, Okay, two to three on the pull, pull into the reciprocal. Looks like we're balanced. One more run. 4,000 at whiskey. Four one turning in, last run. Okay, 5,000 feet. Four, 4 1 in hot. Final run. 4 1. Okay. Cleared hot. Overdid that. Okay, make it good now. Fifteen feet, not bad for the last one. 4 1 off safe. Final run. And uh, range control, Cylon 41 is departing the pattern to the northeast. Request frequency change. 41, range control, copy departing range, frequency change approved. Roger, 41 is cleared to exit, frequency change approved. Okay, let's go who? back to button four. And we'll head back to the pattern. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, safe all the switches. Mm, 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 mm. Oops. Okay, all the uh, select stations are switched. Get that one off. Let's turn the rotary knob off. And I'm going to leave this site on for now. Let's see what else do we need to do to get ready for the... Looks like the fuel is all set. Heading back, fields over there. Back and 51, which we have dialed in about 14 miles away. Okay, we should be able to get uh, uh, three or four landings here to demo the landing pattern. So let's calculate our, our approach speed and then our uh, final turn speed. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's see how much fuel we got. Uh, we got 2,000 pounds. And so that's uh, 1,000 over... Uh, uh, over a thousand, so that's five knots we want to add. So 155, we'll set the uh, knob to 155, which makes our final turn speed 175 and our touchdown speed about 145. 
well above the stall. So we're looking good. Now, we have some extra ordnance. Uh, we have ordnance and we also have the empty pods along with the uh, uh, pylon. So we've got some weight and we'll just see how that affects these numbers. And I don't think very much, but we'll take a look. While we wait, you can take a look at the uh, rocket results numbers here. Hey, I guess probably don't need this anymore, so we'll turn that off as well. Tower Cylon 401 is about three miles west for the overhead. Looks like the approach is clear. Cylon 41, tower, cleared for the overhead. Left brake at upwind numbers approved. Roger, Cylon 401 cleared for the brake, left brake at the uh, upwind numbers. Oops, 2,000 feet. Don't dip down too low. Going in for the carrier break. Looks like the... Uh, now uh, upwind is clear, braking, speed brake out, slow, try to break uh, right along the horizon here, working it back down to 2000. Below 250, I guess I'm uh, clear on the gear, go ahead and get the gear down. Turn into about uh, three, three, five or so. Trim it up a little bit. Trim, trim, trim. And keep the airspeed coming back. Okay, three green light and hell is out. Flaps are at full good hydraulics. Landing light is on. And uh, speed brake is closed. Looking for 175 on the landing speed. Excuse me, uh, the uh, final turn speed. Tower, Cylon 41, 180 gear down, touch and go. Okay, got a little fast there. Cylon 41, tower, cleared for touch and go runway 16 left. Roger, Cylon 41, clear, touch and go. Okay, should be 1,000 feet at the 90. Maintain that airspeed. Nice to have that uh, little fast chevron. That's good. So it looks like uh, these speeds should work out just fine, even with all this extra equipment on. Okay, now I'm going to overbank just a little bit to keep from overshooting. I'm not using any rudder. Never use rudder in these this kind of airplane. Never is a long time, but uh, you really don't want to use rudder. Okay, now you want to slow down. And you want to have a kind of a flat approach as much as you can. Keep it lined up with center line. Just slowly work it, uh, work the, that speed off. There's no hot, no rush here. Right there is 155, that's what you want, 155, right there, that's perfect, right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then as you cross the threshold, bring the power back to idle, and just let it touch down. Hold the nose off, add power. In fact, you can maybe even go into burner a little bit. Get airborne, and come out of burner almost right away. Then gear up, lights off. 
and dump the nose a little bit to accelerate. Use the whole runway. Okay, and then pitch up and then pitch over. And coming back on the power a little bit. And we're going to go below 215 just to hear the gear tone. And we want to level off at 2,000 feet. And waiting for that gear tone. Right, right there it is. Okay, put the gear down. That's just to remind us that our gear is not down yet. So that's the tone you want to be familiar with. Never ignore it. Okay, all right, so there we are. Three green light inhalers out. Flaps are at full good hydraulics. Landing light is on. Uh, speed brake is closed. 175 on the speed. Tower, Cylon 401. A beam gear, touch and go. Cylon 41, tower. Cleared for okay, touch and keep go that speed. Descending to 1,000 feet at the 90. 175 is what we're looking for. Roger, 4-1 is cleared. Okay. Uh, keep the turn in because you don't want to overshoot here. Again, no rudder. Yeah, don't get slow. Okay, I am going to adjust the uh, uh, the landing knob at the 180 here this next time. Okay, slowing down, rolling out, getting down to probably is closer to 153, something like that. And I'll look at it when we get up there. Center line, 153, 155, something like that. And then power all the way to idle. Touching down, add power. You would go to burner. Climbing out. Out of burner, gear up. Light out. And accelerate. Okay, it looks like the speed is, uh, or the fuel. Okay, pitch up, pitch over. Looking for 2,000 feet. It's about 13. Okay, not sure. Okay, there's the gear. Put the gear down. I uh, got a little bit high that time. I had that other buzzer. <clears throat> okay, that's three green. Light and hell is out. And we're down to basic weight of 150. So I'm going to set the knob to that. Okay, we never get any slower than that, by the way. Even when the weight is less, we always use that as our base weight. So I'm starting my turn. So 170 now is the final turn speed. Three green light and hell is up. And tower, Cylon 401, 135, gear down, full stop. Okay, three green light and hell is up. Cylon tower, cleared to land, runway 16 left. Roger, 41 is cleared to land. Okay, I don't want to get slow here. Okay, three green light and hell is out. Flaps are at uh, full. Good hydraulics. Landing light is on and and uh, speed brakes are closed. Okay, 170 is what I'm looking for. Good altitude now. I don't want to overshoot here, so I'm going to increase my angle of bank. No rudder again. Pulling the power back to decelerate. Roll out on final and slow to 150. Slow to 150. Here we go. Keep slowing. Keep slowing. 
keep slowing. Okay, sleep slowing. Okay, there we go. It's good. Hold that, hold that. Okay, and then pull the power back to idle. Touch down. Hold the nose off a little bit. Ooh, don't get airborne. Then set it down. And hit the uh, parachute and the brakes. Okay, good stop. Okay, let's keep it going. Good parachute. And we will clear here. Okay, folks, that's pretty much uh, the landing pattern and the rocket pattern. And uh, I will see you next time as I clear my chute. Okay, shoot's clear, and we'll go ahead and taxi into the line here. Okay, Peter Heat is coming off. Landing light coming off. Jeff flares. Dampeners, radar, flaps. We want those all the way up. And we want the speed brakes actually all the way out. And let's see. Let's go ahead and open up the canopy, but we first open the uh, Go to ram dump, cabin pressure, so we don't uh, lose the canopy into the air. And then, of course, we can just uh, right away go ahead and close it. Okay. Uh, cabin transponder, we can turn that off. And landing lights, uh, we've already got that turned off. Thumb switch is up. Tack end is off. So let's go to TACAN. We don't need the radio anymore, so we can turn the radio off. All right. And let's see. All right. Speed brakes are open. Landing lights off. Cabin pressure is normal. The throttle off. And we should get rid of all those lights. We just have the left generator side um, lights come on. And then we go ahead and turn off the right engine. Uh, aux doors are closed, and now we can go ahead and kill the battery. Okay, folks, that's it. If you happen to hang around.